We continue Unit 9 conic sections with flaps 6 and 7 in our foldable. Any conic section can be written in general conic form. AX squared plus BY squared plus CX plus DY plus E equals zero. This is the general conic form. The coefficients of the square terms A and B in any equation in general conic form will tell us what type of conic we have. If A and B are equal to each other, we have a circle. Now this is not always equal to one. When A and B have different values, but they have the same sign, we have what's called an ellipse. When A and B have different signs, but they may or may not have different values, then we have a hyperbola. And we have a parabola when A or B is zero. So there's only one square term in there. Let's look at a few examples. Looking at example one, we have x squared plus y squared plus 2x minus 12y plus 28 equals zero. Notice I only have the x squares and the y squares highlighted. The rest of the information I don't need. I'm just looking at the coefficients a and b. In example one, I have a equals one and b equals 1. These are the same values, same sign, so therefore if they're the same values and the same signs, we have a circle. So they can both be 1, they can both be 2, both be 3, etc. Example 2. Again, I'm don't, not looking at any of these items. I'm just looking at 3 and negative 1. So my A is 3 and my B is negative 1. Since they're both different terms and the signs are different, I have a hyperbola. So signs different. Right there tells me I have a hyperbola because these may or may not be the same. Okay, now looking at example 3, A is 1 and B is, I'm sorry, A is 2 and B is 3. Those are different values, but the same sign, so I have an ellipse. So we have different values, same sign. And last, number four, example number four, I only have one square term. A is zero, B is one, so therefore, I have a parabola. Now, I want you to pause the video for a few moments and try to get five, six, seven, eight. I did leave some hints up here for you. See if that helps. And so go ahead and pause the video for a few moments. Good, let's see how well you did. Okay, on number five, you should have got a hyperbola. Number six should have been a parabola. Number seven should have been a circle. And number eight is an ellipse. We have just classified the following conics, or the preceding conics. Now let's go to flap 7. In flap 7, we are going to actually take a conic in general form, 
we're going to transform it to standard form to graph a circle and get our center and radius. And to do this, we're going to use what we learned back in the quadratic section last semester and complete the square. So we're going to look at example one. Um, there's three steps to do this, and the first one says rearrange the equation, get the x's grouped on the left with a blank, the y's grouped on the left with a blank, and move the number to the right with two blanks. So looking at example one, let's take care of step one. So first thing we need to do is move the x's together, leave a blank, move the y's together, leave a blank, and move the 20 to the other side, change the sign, and leave two blanks. So I have followed step number one. Let's look at step number two. In step number two, we want to take that problem and we want to find out what the missing term is. And we find out the missing term by completing the square. So I'm looking at the B term on the x's, and that's 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5, and we take 5 squared, and that equals 25. We take the 25 and we add it to both sides of the equation. Now I'll do the same thing with the y's. Take the B term, which is negative 4, divide it by 2, and I get negative 2. We take negative 2 and we square it, and we get positive 4. So I take positive 4 and I add it to both sides. So now I have completed the square, filled in the blanks, and if you notice, this piece here and this piece here make up perfect square trinomials. And we talked about this also last semester. Okay, so now we're going to take and we're going to do step number three, rewrite the equation, and we're going to write the x's in factored form, the y's in factored form, and add the numbers to the right. So we are going to be taking care of the x's in factored form the y's in factored form, and we're going to do the numbers on the right. Okay, so let's take care of this. If you remember from the quadratic section in factored form, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me x squared plus 10x plus 25. So x times x is x squared, and two numbers that multiply together to give me 25 but add together to give me 10, or 5, and 5. And then to do the y's. Got y and y, two numbers that multiply together to give me 4, but combine together to give me negative 4, is negative 2 and negative 2. And then I'm going to add the numbers to on the right. So negative 20 plus 25 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9. So this right here condenses to x plus 5 squared, the y's condense to y minus 2 squared, and that's equal to 9. If you notice, and you may not have noticed, but this piece right here is the same as these two numbers, and I guess I should have done that in orange. This piece is the same as these two numbers, and this piece is the same as these two numbers. Now we're all ready. We have everything we need to graph. My center is negative 5 comma 2 and my radius is 3. So I'm going to go out negative 5, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2. And my radius is 3 all around. So 1, 2, 3, And once I have that, I'm going to draw my circles. And there we have our circle from 
the general form. We put it into the standard form so that we could graph it. Now I would like for you to go to example two and try that on your own at this time. So go ahead and pause the video and go to example two. Very good. At this point, we have x squared plus y squared plus 12x minus 6y plus 29 equals 0. So we gathered the x's together first. And left a blank. We gathered the y's together and left a blank. And then we did uh, completing the square to get the 36 and the 9. And then we added the 36 and the 9 to, both, um, to the right side of the equation. At this point in the process, this right here is a perfect square trinomial. The y part is a perfect square trinomial. And when we factor it, we'll end up with x plus 6 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 16 and now I have my equation to a circle and I have my center and my radius to graph it. Okay, let's look at example 3. In example 3, I have 3x squared plus 3y squared minus 6x plus 24y plus 24 is equal to zero. First thing I want to do is divide everything by three and then I have x squared plus y squared minus 2x plus 8y plus 8 equals zero. At this point in the process I would like for you to pause your video for a few seconds, try to work the rest of this problem and graph it, and then turn it, start the video back up. Okay, at this point you should have x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared plus 8y plus 16 and equals negative 8 plus 1 plus 16. This right here is a perfect square trinomial and I get x minus 1 times x minus 1 which is x minus 1 squared. This, the y's are a perfect square trinomial, y plus 4 times y plus 4 square it, and that's equal to 9. Now I have my center at 1, negative 4, my radius at 3, and this is the graph you should have gotten.